So we talked about stage fright too much in the past <laughs> because it just keeps giving. And uh, that's certainly the case here. What's happened is uh, Zimperium, everybody will remember, were the guys who found a number of flaws in the in the media processing code of the stage fright module, which handles multimedia for Android. Uh, Google didn't write it. They got it from somewhere. Um, and it, it just turns out it has all kinds of problems. And so we've, we've talked about those. Zimperium created a, a tool that lists all of the known uh, vulnerabilities. And, and over time, then that brought up the whole issue of, you know, are mobile phone manufacturers maintaining phones after they've sold them? Do they care about them? The argument being, you know, these are computers. We know computers have to be kept patch current. And, and these, so on one hand, the mobile uh, suppliers want to just consider it a, a, a retail sale and then charge you for connectivity. My argument is if they're profiting on your, on the service of, of you being connected to them, then with that should come an obligation that this device they sold you and are, are, are using to connect and, and consume the service that you're paying for, they ought to have responsibility for, for pushing to it uh, patches, which are being made available to them. It's not like they've got to independently create a security team and, and design fixes. No, they're, all they have to do is push what, what, the, what, what, what security researchers or often Google makes available. Um, you know, they're lazy. They choose not to. Um, or the, the, the other problem is they may say, oh, well, you know, we'll do it for a year. Well, if they ought to do it for the service life of, of the device, if they're taking revenue from you for using the device, they should have an obligation. Anyway, what's happened is a different group, an Israeli security firm named Northbit, has come up with a new exploit against the old stage fright, that is the, the, the patched stage fright, um, which uh, uses a vulnerability which, as it was written, for some reason Google never fixed. Um, apparently, this was a known vulnerability that never got patched. So what's interesting is that in Android 4.1, Google increased the security by adding address space layout randomization, ASLR, which we've talked about often. This is a, a, a technology that Windows got a while ago and, and OS X or even before OS 10, you know, uh, Apple's Mac OS got, where, where the, the system is inherently composed of a bunch of individual modules. And the dangerous way of, of arranging things is just to stack them all from the bottom of memory up in the same order every time. That's dangerous because... What that, what that does is it creates a, a rich code base of, of repurposable code which attackers can use if in applications running elsewhere in memory, they can get any kind of a foothold. If they can create a buffer overrun, if they can leave something on the stack which gets popped, which causes the return not to the function which called the malicious function, but a return to existing code at a known address elsewhere in the system, and that's called ROP, uh, return-oriented programming, where you're able to stitch together um, existing code to perform some malicious feat. The reason that's important is that those regions of memory are marked executable, whereas the stack is typically flagged as being data only. You, uh, there's the, it's called the NX, the, the, the no execute bit. That can be set on the descriptor of the memory for the stack, which prevents the attacker from running their own code 
that they may have brought in to the buffer, but they can still cause um, a, a, a fault where, where existing code that's authorized to run in the operating system can go. So in order to defeat this, this the concept has been, hey, there's no reason we need to stack everything from the ground up in the same order each time. Let's just scatter this all these modules for this modular operating system, like in the case of Windows, DLLs, these dynamic link libraries, they're dynamically linked. They can be dynamic anywhere they want to be. So let's just scatter them around. Now, there are normally limitations on the granularity of, of position, which which brings the entropy of their location down some. But at least the idea is that the idea is every time the system boots, it randomly arranges somehow to randomly or pseudo-randomly rearrange the modules so that code that is then running is not at a known location. And we've seen exploits where the, the, the bad guys just, okay, we're in an ASLR system, so there's a 1 in 256 chance that the module we need to execute code from will be in the location we're hoping. If not, we crash. If so, we win. And so the, the attackers basically accept a much lower degree of, of success on their exploits, specifically because of ASLR. Well, it turns out that what this, it's called the metaphor exploit, is able to leverage an information leakage due to the way um, this stage fright module had the flaw in the stage fright module to obtain the, the exact layout of modules in the ASLR. Uh, system, which completely removes the effectiveness of address space layout randomization and hugely improves their ability to successfully attack the phones. So there's a proof of concept exploit, which works against Android versions 2.2 through 4.0. Um, uh, doesn't work against 4.1 but does against 5.0 and 5.1. And in fact, uh, it was believed that 5.1 was immune, but it's believed to be that no longer. It turns out that 19% of Android phones are currently running version 5.1. Now, it does, it does require phone-specific code. So one so-called drive-by exploit won't be able to attack all Android phones, even of the same version. So, uh, so it it but 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 it turns out that a site, for example, could see what you've got and then send you a a phone-specific payload to attack that particular phone. And the 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 researcher said that this works best on Nexus Five models with a stock ROM, uh, also on the HTC One, the LG G3, and the Samsung S5. So uh, uh, stage fright is back, um, and I saw a number somewhere. Um, I had it in my notes. Oh, about three, nearly 300 million Android phones. The original st stage flight, stage fright exploits. Uh, were effective against a much larger number, 950 million. So this is less than a third, yet it's a much stronger attack. So if the if you had the the at risk phone with the not yet patched uh, uh, version of Android, then um, uh, and the payload was for that phone, uh, it looks like the attack would be pretty successful, and then. In just in late breaking news, this was just yesterday, Google has stated in response to this that they, they wrote Android dev devices with a security patch level of October 1st, 2015 or greater are protected 
because of a fix released for this issue last year. And then Google said, as always, we appreciate the security community's research efforts <clears throat> as they help further secure the Android ecosystem for everyone. So our moral is keep mobile devices updated, only use mobile devices from reputable vendors who do keep their devices updated post-sale, um, and use them only so long as they are being kept, kept updated because these things are computers and all the evidence demonstrates that they're going to have problems. Steve, the, the ASLR leak, uh, so it's leaking where the target module is in memory? Is, is that the, the, the bit of information that's leaking out? Yes, it's described as an information leakage. And I forgot to mention, I've got the link to the exploit description in the show notes, mm -hmm. I was stunned. It is an absolutely amazing piece of work. If, if anyone is interested in a case study in, in how to do this, how this works, these guys, these uh, Northbit guys, uh, it's... Uh, well, it, 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 the, the domain is exploit-db.com. Uh, again, slash doc slash uh, 39527.pdf. It's beautiful. It's got graphics. It, wow. walks, it's, it walks you through this thing. It's just, it's just a beautiful piece of work. So if anyone is interested in, like, digging in, uh, th these guys have really nailed it. But, but to answer your question, Padre, yes, basically there is a there, there's an information leakage which which discloses the 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 module location instance, which then allows the bad guys to attack with with essentially a hundred percent reliability. Basically, if everything is set up right, you get owned. I'm just. I just started looking through this uh, this file. It is interesting because it looks like they're exploiting the. Um, uh, they've got an unsigned integer, a 32-bit unsigned integer, that they declare, and then they they put it into an unsigned 64-bit in order to give it extra space. So all you have to do is write 65 bits of data, and you've got an overflow. Yep. Wow. It, it turns out it it's in the it's in the MPEG four file format implementation. There's just a mistake there in parsing it. And we see it, we saw that with Stage Fright before. Mm -hmm. There were some typecasting problems where the compiler just, you know, didn't do, it It wasn't checking for any inequality correctly. And so that, it was like signed versus unsigned. And that difference in, in, in inequality testing allowed them to like, you know, sneak past a, a test that was there to pre keep this from happening. It's right. like, well, the test is there and we just bypass the test. What I do like about this is in the, uh, in the structure that they, they have in the example here, it basically tells you how to overflow the, the module because <laughs> it, it yeah. has what the input is and then it has a separate line that says, oh yeah, 64 bit, it will never get bigger than this. It's like, oh, okay, I'll make it bigger <laughs> than that. <laughs> right. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you for that very I'm helpful not, comment. I'm not going to bother checking because <laughs> no MPEG-4 file is ever going to have something bigger than 64 bits. A 32-bit unsigned integer will never be bigger than a 64-bit unsigned integer, right? I mean, let's and just... think of all the time we'll save not performing a test. <laughs> now, that's performance. There we go. Wow. Wow. <laughs>